Greetings, my name is Kevin Reddick and I welcome you to my channel, Conversations from the Hot Box. Here we are passionate about discussing real life issues and I do so from a Christian biblical perspective. I believe that by sharing experiences and insights, we can learn from one another and grow in our faith and understanding of God's word. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification buttons uh, like us and revisit our channel for more engaging and enlightening sessions. Today's session addresses the topic, the adopted children of the father of lies, or uh, the flood of disinformation, misinformation, and lies in our society. So jump in the car and let's ride. To begin, uh, let me unpack what I mean by referring to individuals as adopted children of Satan. Adoption as a theological concept refers to the act of God or Satan receiving individuals under their guidance, direction, and influence. I use the word adoption because we are not spiritual children of Satan, but can display and function in the same characteristics of Satan. Children, uh, used in this sense as those who are the children of Satan, show his characteristics. Jesus uses the same principle in John chapter 8, verses 44, when he tells the Jews that they are of their father, the devil. Satan was not their literal father, but he alludes to the fact that they displayed the spiritual characteristics of their spiritual father, Satan. Now, what I'm about to share uh, may be news uh, to some of you, but I do need you to consider. Our real battle as Christians is not so much with sin as it is with temptation. And temptation is a struggle between our will and our earthly desires, which are our appetites, our feelings, our passions those things that find satisfaction in the here and now. Our earthly desires include the stuff that stimulates. These things are not bad in and of themselves, but only when they are off limits in God's sight. See, when you have thoughts about the married man or woman you work with, Satan is at work. When you'd rather watch or read romantic movies and books than work on your romance and your marriage, Satan is at work. When coffee becomes something you gotta have to start your day instead of prayer, yeah, Satan is at work. When these earthly desires play a tug of war with your spiritual will, Paul calls that the lust of the flesh. When Adam and Eve occupied Eden, the only thing Satan could use to appeal to their earthly desire was one fruit tree among many. Sometimes, you know, I think about that and I, I just can't get over that. Of all that God uh, allowed for, to be at their disposal in the garden, the fact that one tree wasn't intrigued them so much that they just had to partake of. And that's one of the things Satan does. He puts away the fact of, of what you have and let you focus on what you don't have. And how much more valuable uh, are we when Satan has worldly lurks uh, or, or worldly uh, uh, weapons, so to speak, such as mass media, the internet, alcohol, prescription drugs, nicotine, caffeine, pornography at his disposal to tempt us. It is a fact that this current flood of lies, misrepresentation, and misinformation in our society is energizing and powered by social media and how easily people believe what is presented on social media platforms. And because Satan is the father of all lies, he and his demonic forces are particularly uh, skilled at deception. He lies about who we are. He lies about who God is. He lies about who he is and what he does. When we accept the lie, no matter how Satan got us to believe it, we transfer our belief from one God, I mean, from one father, God, 
to believe in another father, the enemy of our souls. And this is how we become adopted as children of Satan. Two things that will hold us in deception are ignorance and pride. First, we must realize that God does not desire that we be ignorant. Our primary source of truth is the word of God. Now, you may be believing something about God, about yourself or others that is contrary to the Bible. That is one reason we as Christians must know the Bible for ourselves. The more we know what it really says, the less uh, uh, of an opening Satan and his agents have to lie to us. This is also why the belt of truth and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, are two essential elements of our spiritual armor as Christians. John uh, 8, 44 tells us, you are of your father, the devil. And it is your will to practice the lust and gratify the desires which are characteristic of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks of falsehood, he speaks what is natural to him. For he is a liar himself and the father of lies and all that is false. And that is how the Amplified Bible. Satan is the father of lies in that he was the first to ever tell a lie. Therefore, he is the father of lies and he is characterized as a liar himself. In this text, we find Jesus uh, where he is literally through with playing games and being nice. <laughs> he had listened to these people claim that Abraham uh, 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 and God as their father and he was no longer interested in the lies they were telling. Jesus asserted that his mission was one from God but the mind, their minds were so prejudiced that they were unable to hear what it was Jesus was sharing with them and one of the outcomes of prejudice and racism is the inability to hear and accept the truth contrary to current incorrect thoughts living in the mind, which is producing the prejudice and the racism. This ideal of moral impossibility is further underlined in the charge that the devil was their father. The implications of this were far reaching. Uh, uh, you know, there, there are stages in the, in the thought processing here. Here we, we see the devil is a murderer. And we find that these people were seeking to kill Jesus. Therefore, they are his children. <laughs> the devil's most uh, a characteristic feature stressed here was his hatred of the truth. And note the expressions in this text, that he is a liar and the father of lies. The latter expression could mean that he is the father of a liar, thus making it more personal. Jesus declared that Satan does not stand in the truth. To stand refers to being in or to rise to an upright position. Upright implies having or showing a strict regard for what is morally right and a strict adherence to moral principles. So in saying that Satan does not stand in truth, he does not stand for what is morally right or moral principle. But make no mistake, Satan is standing. Not only is he standing, he's walking and running. But he's walking and running in the, in the activity of standing in falsehood. The writer of Psalms 1 and 1 informs us, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scorn. What this text is saying is blessed in the, it is the individual who stands on and declares truth. You know, Paradise Laws, which is a reference to Adam and Eve being kicked out of the garden, uh, began with the lives of the serpent. 
the serpent of old who is called the devil and Satan and who deceives the whole world according to Revelations 12 and 9. So it is no surprise that we find the devil uh, uh, spewing deceit. And since he is crafty, since, since his expertise is crafting lies that sound almost true, we find Eve falling for his schemes. See, God, God had said quite plainly not to eat of one tree in the middle of the garden. But the devil was able, with his clever lies, to convince her that she should indeed eat. Satan is no less cunning today. And therefore, it may be helpful for us to observe his strategies and guard ourselves accordingly. He is a deceiver and lies are his favorite weapons. Satan does not specialize in, in lies that are quite apparent. <laughs> you know, his his stock and trade are the uh, uh, gray-white variety, so to speak, with just enough truth in them to trick the un, un, unknowing. Now, there was a measure of truth in what he said to Eve. She and Adam did come to know good and evil but they had no power to do the good or resist the evil. Satan was even used uh, uh, scripture as he did with Jesus in Matthew uh, 4 and 6, but always he would misquote it or misapply it. See, when you read something that Satan says, look for the liar. <laughs> he cannot speak the truth. When we believe his lies, they take root in our minds and Satan establishes a stronghold. And this is why it is so difficult to identify the lies and even more difficult to stop believing them. And this is also true for those who operate as his children and, 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 and just spew out lies to the people. Understand that truth is always available to us should we decide to embrace it. You see, a lie will grab you, but the truth must be in, uh, uh, embraced. The truth. See, most lies uh, uh, have a sensationalism to them. So they grab or, or seize us suddenly and roughly. And to grab implies more roughness or rudeness than to hold or embrace. To embrace is an act of accepting or supporting something willingly, enthusiastically. We hold someone or something close as a sign of affection. Jesus is the truth that should be embraced. He is more powerful than Satan and therefore his truths are more powerful than Satan's lies. By allowing truth to take root in our minds, Satan's stronghold is weakened and eventually destroyed. God's claim uh, 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 that are grounded, that were once occupied by Satan, but renewed in our mind sets us free. And this is what is meant by the statement, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Nothing is more victorious than a person uh, 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 captive to a cult than to recognize the lies and accept the truth of Christ and all in that be set free. Galatians chapter five, verse one tells us, and this is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Why do people lie to and about each other? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. And I want to just let, just let that resonate for a moment because there is a reason. And the answer to that question is situation-based. See, partly it's, it's from malice, partly it's from pride. See, when you lie to put someone else down, it's malice. When you lie to impress or move and use them, 
or to keep them from seeing you in a bad light is pride. Satan lied and he continues to lie because he hates God and his children. Men lie to shield themselves from exposure and to further uh, their exposed interests. Fear, contempt, and revenge, boastful deceit, fraud, and the desire to shine by telling a good story are other motives that prompt lies. For example, catching a four-foot fish makes for a better story than catching a four-inch one. <laughs> Lying insults one's intelligence and shows a lack of respect for the one receiving the lie. A truth-telling, promise-keeping God who cannot lie and who wants to see us in his own moral image naturally hates a lying tongue or, and a false witness who breathes out lies. There is no godliness without truthfulness. Now, if you knew a person close to you was known for continually lying and telling stories that were actually not true, in most cases, you would place no confidence in that person's word. Why then do we dwell on the suggestions pouring into our minds that are the product of the world's greatest life? If we knew that the darts burning into our thoughts and emotions are coming from the enemy and the enemy is a liar, then shut out the liar and close the door on his lies and the lives of his children. Because of Satan's influence in the earth, being truthful represents a new problem. <laughs> See, there are people to whom it is clearly not uh, uh, healthy to tell the whole truth, and then there are those deemed not yet strong enough to take bad news. Those uh, mad and bad folks who would use what you tell them to harm others such as a politician uh, who, who puts serving himself above serving the citizens he or she is supposed to represent. Many engage in prideful lying designed to put one down to exalt themselves at the other's expense. Yet a lie, even when prompted by love, loyalty, or uh, uh, recognition, Yet it still remains an evil thing not to tell the truth according to the Bible. To bear false witness for one's neighbor is not so bad as bearing false witness against one's neighbor. But the lie is still a lie. Now, rightly, uh, uh, an individual can feel defiled. Rightly, he will seek fresh cleansing from the blood of Christ and settle for living the only way one uh, uh, can live with our holy God, by the forgiveness of sins. So again, we say, Lord, have mercy and lead us not into this particular type of temptation where only a choice of sin seems to open up to us but yet deliver us, Father, from evil. The five main root sources of lying are one, Satan's direct influence, two, wrong information, three, denial or situational ethics. What I mean by that, for example, is uh, an individual that says, I don't see myself as a liar. If accomplishing a greater good means I have to distort the truth, I'll do it. <laughs> That's just, you, that person is in denial. You're still lying. Number four is shame. Example of that is individual who says, I have to lie because I'm afraid of what others will think of me since I'm not the person I should be at times. <laughs> Number five is manipulation influencing or controlling someone or something to one's advantage, often without the other person's knowledge. For example, 
someone might be manipulated or manipulating other people's feelings or public opinion. Lying has become an act so abundant in our daily interactions that it is often taken for granted. Yet, it is an intriguing phenomenon that begs a deeper investigation into its true impact on our mental health, our relationships, and society at large. Lying refers to the deliberate act of deviating from the truth with the intention to deceive. This human behavior varies in scale and impact from the so-called white lies told to protect someone's feelings to grand deception, which can change the course of an individual's life. According to Robert Feltman's 2002 study, up to 60% of adults cannot have a 10 minute conversation without lying at least once. This staggering statistic puts into perspective how commonplace lying is in our everyday lives. When one is at the receiving end of the lie, it can lead to psychological distress and relationship issues. Being lied to often incites feelings of betrayal and hurt. It can be, it can be an emotionally disorienting experience that leaves the individual questioning their judgment. Once the lie is exposed, it casts a shadow of doubt on past and future interactions, leading to a significant loss of trust. The deceived individual may become uh, weary and suspicious, which can impede the development of healthy relationships. Consistently being lied to can also have a detrimental effect on mental health. It can lead to anxiety, uh, feeling, feelings of insecurity, uh, reduced self-esteem, and in some cases, depression. The societal impact of lying is great as well. You see, lying isn't just a personal or relational issue. Its repercussions ripple out to affect society as well. Widespread lying, especially in the realms of politics or business, contributes to a culture of distrust. It erodes uh, our society's uh, cohesiveness and it undermines the functioning of our society. The economic and political consequences vary. Lying can have a far-reaching uh, economic and political uh, uh, detriment to our society and to our families. It can lead to financial losses, awkward uh, 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 decision-making, skewed election results, and can even destabilize economies and governments. The impact of lying is not a small thing. We can't keep writing it off with statements that, oh, that's just the way they talk. From individual mental health to societal or uh, trust issues, the cost of deception is significant. And it's time we call for the embracing of honesty and fostering open, truthful communication. It is vital for our mental health and the health of our family, society, and relationships. With understanding, self-awareness, and uh, professional support, uh, we can all strive to make truthfulness a guiding principle in our lives. Well, that's all I have to say today. What say you? And I hope you enjoyed the ride today. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please click on the button above labeled Prayer of Salvation, or I have a link below in my comment section. Otherwise, again, I want to thank you for spending your time with me. And please, once again, take a second to like this channel, to subscribe to this channel, to share this channel with family and friends. And as always, peace and blessings to you and your household.